YouTube, what's going on everybody? Rise and shine, I hope everybody's feeling wonderful on this Friday, early Friday a.m. And I definitely appreciate you for tuning in with me. I go by the name of No Face the Rambler, and we're going to get into this, man. Because up here on the screen, this is who I like to call the godfather of the underworld in New York City. Omar Portis, a.k.a. OG Mac, UBN, five sets, the five original sets that this man created. You know what I'm saying? Birth from the ashes of, of Rikers Island, he created these sets to unify the blacks that were being under attack by the Puerto Ricans and various other individuals with Spanish backgrounds on Rikers Island. Now, OG Mac, OG Mac gets a, gets a bad rap, man, and he gets a bad name. I'm gonna break that down in this video, the pros and cons of what he created, you know what I'm saying? Because me personally, man, I understand why the brother did what he did and have at the same time he unleashed the following on both sides of the red and blue that are just in utterly chaos and confused as they roam the streets of New York to this very day so let's bring it back First off, as the stories go, and as the streets talk, somewhere between the early 90s, man, this brother OG Mac, man, resided in the Bronx, born and raised in the Bronx, South Bronx, that is, and he had a name for himself, you know what I mean, he was definitely, um, he was definitely about his action, you know what I'm saying? He would definitely give you the business at any time and any given day. And individuals knew that, you know what I'm saying? Now, it's kind of shifty and there's numerous variations of stories of how he adopted the blood concept into his gangsterism, you know what I'm saying? In fact, there was one dude, I forgot his name, but rest in peace, um, dude was professing that he was Elm Street Pyro from the West, and that he came to New York, and he put OG Mac down, basically with that, that blood life, you know what I'm saying, and he said that uh, OG Mac uh, had attempted to uh, put a hit out on him. After he learned what he learned from the guy. But unfortunately, the assassination attempt on that Elm Street dude, it didn't go through because OG Mac got incarcerated. And um, this was around 92, 93. You know what I'm saying? So the, the brother from the West Coast definitely uh definitely had his his timeline right, you know what I'm saying? However, as I stated earlier, it's just different variations. The one thing I know for sure, for all these brothers out on the West, and brothers basically from across the United States, they have their personal opinions about OG Mac, talking about, you know, he was a fake blood, he was Fugazi, yada, yada, yada. We're going to cut that out. And, uh, gonna eliminate all that factor because I'm gonna tell you right now you got to keep in mind man 93 94 there was no such a thing as the internet and if it was it wasn't broad or mainstream the way that it is now and there were certain things that OG Mac knew and had knowledge of as far as the 
the blood lifestyle. I mean, he knew how to be walk. You know what I'm saying? He knew how to be walk. And that's not something that somebody adapts by reading the Source magazines, the Double XL magazines back in those days and times. Which means, number one, either the Elm Street Pyro from the West that professed that he came to the Bronx in the early 90s and put it down was right and exact and correct in what he was saying with OG Mac. Or, me, my personal theory on it, knowing how New York dudes are and certified New York fashion. Cause I'm a New Yorker myself And I know how NYC brothers get down You know what I'm saying I personally think That on Rikers Island OG Mac Was incarcerated With somebody from the west coast That were professing they were bloods Or they was affiliated With the bloods and I think OG Mac either got down with the guy or he basically jacked his whole style and swag. Learned what he could learn from that individual. And brought his own form of blood creation to a whole nother level. In Rikers Island. That's my personal opinion. Because somebody had to show him how to be walk. Somebody had to show him how to maneuver and to think and eat and walk and talk like a blood. It's not something that you learn from watching boys in the hood or reading magazines while being incarcerated. So like I said, who knows, you know? It's open for anybody's interpretation, man. And everybody's interpretation. But one thing I will say about OG Mac is what he created and what he started was never meant to leave the Rikers Island facility. The only place that it was supposed to go was upstate penitentiaries in the state of New York you know what I'm saying however what OG Mac created is definitely is definitely a pro and a con to it you know what I'm saying and I'm gonna point out the pros and the cons in this video right here you know what I'm saying now the pros with the UBN, the Blood Nation, or the style of blood, gangship that OG Mac brought, created within the walls of Rikers Island, that spilled out to the streets. The pros about it, you gotta understand. That blood shit when it hit New York streets, man. It made enemies form alliances. You had certain projects, you had certain boroughs, you had certain hoods with inside these boroughs that never really got along. They were always known enemies. They didn't really rock together. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that they picked up that banner and they picked up that flag, you know what I'm saying? It brought them together. It brought them together, you know what I'm saying? And they all came a step with unison. So, in all reality, what I'm saying is, just to give you an example, you know, if you had, um, you know, Queensbridge Projects, and dudes from Queensbridge Projects, who had, uh, who had beef with Brothers and Van Dyke Projects 
in Brownsville, Brooklyn, who never got along. You know what I'm saying? What a fact that they were both claiming something under the UBN umbrella that opened up doors for them to network. That opened up doors for them to set aside their drama. And they was able to they was able to unify. You know what I'm saying? So OG Max creation of the UBN, it most definitely, it most definitely brought some form of unity in the streets. And it made a lot of projects in the hoods that really weren't rocking with each other get along. You know what I'm saying? And also the rules and the codes of the UVN, what OG Mac created, it gave individuals certain principles and codes and guidelines to live by. It gave them a form of discipline and a form of honor. You know what I'm saying? So it, it has certain certain pros that came with that lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Definitely has certain pros that came with that lifestyle. And also, what he created with the UVN. Any and everybody just couldn't pick up a red bandana and say that they was affiliated with this or affiliated with that. Because the G-checking came about. And for y'all that don't know what G-checking came about, or y'all don't know what G-checking is, to break it down in layman terms, man, you can't profess to be something because somebody's definitely going to holler at you and they're going to quiz you and they're going to see what you're about. And if you're not knowing any form of knowledge of history or the origins of what it is that you're representing, it's curtains. It's curtains. Some form of discipline that can lead all the way up to death will be an action took because you false flagging and you don't know what the hell it is that you're talking about or you don't know what the hell it is that you're representing. You know what I'm saying? And OG Mac definitely brought that to the table. Definitely brought that to the table. You know what I'm saying? And he also had the distinctive mark of identifying each other. Not only breaking down the original five sets, which were one A tray, which was his hood, which was OG Max Hood, the Bronx. You had nine trays, and you also had nine trays Billy's. I had a stronghold on Harlem and out in Brooklyn you had the Shine Boys the G Shine and back to the Bronx again you had SMM Sex Money Murder in which we all know the Pistol Pete was given his own chapter for that you know what I'm saying and in Queens in Queens you had various UVN sets that rocked out with that. You know what I'm saying? And along, along with these sets that was dictated to their own regions and had a stronghold in their own Pacific boroughs, you had triple O marks the burn marks on the arm that was identified to who you were and what you represented you know what I'm saying so it was unique it was genius and it was definitely concealed and it was definitely a lifestyle you know what I'm saying and OG Mac has got to give props for that. However, 
the cons. The cons of OG Max form of the UBN in the East Coast way. Or New York City should I wait? Or New York City style should I say? Of that blood shit. The cons. The cons. Is that. UBN. Should have never left Rikers Island. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a. It's a prison. Slash jail. Way of gang banging. And that's what a lot of other people. Outside of New York City. And with inside New York City don't understand. That's why there's codes. That's why there's a hierarchy. Unlike the West, who really don't have a hierarchy. It's basically OGs and YGs and BGs kind of move in unison. But out on East, on the East Coast, and NYC specifically, there's a hierarchy. That you got to answer to. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of individuals don't understand that. That's why. You have to this day. Various individuals who broke off from the UBN. And they popping up. Claiming these West Coast sets. Which is. Totally. Totally crazy to me. Because. My personal opinion. If you never been out west, you never lived or visited out west, or you never stayed out west for a long period of time, there's no way in hell that you could profess to claim any form of blood equipped set, especially their blocks and their hoods out there, and rep it out east. Because you don't know. The history, the true origins, or what the fuck it is that you're really getting into. You know what I'm saying? As well as the cons of what OG Mac created. It's hard, number one, in NYC to be a, a, a full fledged game member. Because NYC doesn't have the culture that LA has. When I'm saying the culture, they don't have the culture of game banging. It doesn't date back to the 50s and the 60s, like what LA does. You know what I'm saying? It's a total disconnect. So, how a lot of brothers out west, in which I agree, they see what's going on in these NYC streets as far as game banging. It's comical. It's definitely comical. You know what I'm saying? Because in reverse of what OG Mac did, like I broke down earlier, how the UBN formed certain alliances with hoods that never really got along. Well, to kind of act that problem when you had the Crips spot along the NYC. You got to keep in mind, these Crips just really came out of nowhere. And a lot of Crips had best friends that were bloods. You know what I'm saying? So, they really wasn't going to bang on each other. They wasn't going to gang bang on each other. So it was individual beefs. You know what I'm saying? And that is totally contradictory and out of line to a game banger lifestyle. Now don't get it twisted, I'm not I'm not celebrating or saying that you no know, NYC has to have a form of genocide when it comes to that. I'm not saying that at all. You know what I mean? But in a nutshell, you can't claim something and put your heart, soul, and mind and all your energy into something that you 
totally going to rock with and that you're willing to die for, as you say, that comes out of your mouth. But you're rocking with the opposite. You know what I'm saying? Your best friend and family members is the opposite. That's totally, totally fugazi. You know what I'm saying? And also the cons in NYC, man. As far as that game banging shit, you got a lot of a lot of self-proclaimed OGs that just pop up out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking dudes who was 24 years old in the streets. Caught their first case at the age of 24. Got locked up. Come home at the age of 27. And all of a sudden they self-proclaimed OGs. Of a blood or a crip set. You know what I'm saying? They waited to the age of 24. Or 25. And in some cases. I know some dudes that. Waited to the age of 27. To get affiliated. With certain blood and crip sets man. And all of a sudden. They self proclaimed OGs. Which mean. Under their belt. Or their career. They body of work of game banging. They was only active. For a year to seven months and then retired and claimed OG status so they could fall back. And it's like, really? I don't know what the fuck that shit's about. You ain't no fucking OG. You know what I'm saying? You might be an OG to the point where you made it to a certain age. You know what I'm saying? But as far as on a gang ethnic, Man, you who that? You never was. You know what I'm saying? And you never will be. So I don't know what that bullshit is about. All these self-proclaimed OGs rocking around in NYC, man. That shit is that shit is foo foo for real. The other kind about NYC and everything that branched out from the UBN what you gotta realize is the terrain the terrain in New York City is totally different from the terrain in Los Angeles you know what I'm saying the way the terrain is in New York City it's not built and it's not designed for individuals to beef I ran a rack like that you know what I'm saying I interact as far as gang warfare is concerned it's not cause NYC what we call hoods are mainly and predominantly projects so there's no way you can have a project that consists of eight buildings and five buildings out of the eight are blood. Two buildings out of the eight are crypts. And the last building is just neutrals. You know what I mean? It doesn't rock like that. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't rock like that. Whereas in LA, there's houses, there's neighborhoods and streets that are sectioned off and claimed by these particular gangs you know what I'm saying so it uh it fits their terrain you know what I mean the other kind that comes with the the UBN NYC game banging and everything else that stems from that is these hybrid gangs in which For the life of me, I don't understand. I think that shit is weak. I think that shit is whack. And I think it's non-existence. And I think it's whack for one reason. Because if you're a blood or a crip and you get money together, you put your differences aside, and you not only get money with each other, but you're riding out and you're banging on each other, banging with each other on other people. Yeah, I mean, I salute that. The only problem I see, you need to drop that blood and crip identity and form your own shit. 
because you can't sit up and say that you're a crip crab killer with bees and blood lit tattered all over your body with red bandanas but the man you're getting money with and the dude that you'll ride and die for is a crip you know what I'm saying a vice versa it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense you know what I mean and then to add insult to injury in a lot of these NYC hoods from what I see you know what I'm saying whether it be Crip or Bloods in one building alone in a project whether the project or that building is strictly dominated by Crips or Bloods there's a lot of gang members claiming 25 to 30 different sets at a time you know what I'm saying so it's like what the fuck is that you know what I'm saying who are you you know what I mean and 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 and, and. I respect what it is that a person is doing as far as some formal against the activity man whether you eating you hustling or you doing whatever you got to do to survive out there I can understand that but you have to know who you are you know what I'm saying and you got to know what it is that you're representing and what you're aligning yourself with before you just start titling yourself with just random street gangs that you feel that you identify with you know what I'm saying it's crazy man but that's my breakdown of OG Mac you know what I'm saying and that's one of the reasons why I think OG Mac gets a bad rep and why a lot of people try to shit on his name in which me I would never shit on his name cause the brother never told he never snitched he kept it funky all the way till he got sent to the feds in Colorado because this let's remember on the streets on the streets after he came home in 99 or 2000 or something like that he had about a 17 month run and from there he went straight to the feds and was given life and he's up there with your gangsters of all gangsters he's in the Colorado facility the federal joint with Jeff Fort and Larry Hoover so you can't leave that out you know what I'm saying shout out to OG Mac man peace and love man I got an understanding of what it is that you tried to create and what it is that you did create but it got out of hand and you're only one man and you know how New York City is man dudes will take it it'll spread like wildfire they're gonna run with it and like how somebody dies in the street niggas will mourn you for a few minutes or so until they like they blunt and then it's all over and it's all forgotten word this is no face to rambler I thank you for tuning in with me man on a early Friday morning and I appreciate the fact that we was able to get to some form of understanding of this breakdown of this game breakdown in NYC and the brothers from the west coast that are listening I hope I was able to clarify and point out 
some of the grievances that you may have in order for you to understand it. But it's 2017, 2018, man. It's pro-love and no love. And that's how we rock it. You know what I'm saying? Peace.